Hello everyone, Hyper here, and for today's video, unfortunately, I have some bad news for Unholy DK players. In today's Shadowlands beta build, we got a few Unholy DK changes that I wanted to talk about, because on the surface, they might not seem all that impactful, but once you take a look at their interaction with talents, conduits, and so on, they make a pretty big difference to how Unholy DK actually plays. All right, let's take a look at the post that outlines these changes. So their goal with all of these changes were to, first of all, reduce the number of globals that you need to press in your opener, because as you probably know, Unholy DK needs to press a lot of cooldowns before it actually starts doing damage. So they wanted to minimize that a little bit. They also wanted to help out our rune economy. So that means they just wanted to increase the number of resources you have so that your spec feels smoother to play. So the first change is that Summon Gargoyle is now back to being a talent. This means that in the last tier we have Army of the Damned, Summon Gargoyle, and Unholy Assault. So it still works the same exact way as it did before, um, and it's still going to be just as useless as it was before. This change removes a global cooldown from our opener in the sense that it removes an ability from our toolkit entirely, just because Summon Gargoyle has been so undertuned for the entirety of BFA throughout the entirety of uh, beta testing that if it's a talent, you're just simply not going to play it. As a baseline ability, it was barely passable just because you got it for free, so you might as well press it. So the next change is that Epidemic is baseline, and out of all of these changes, this is pretty much the only good one. So hooray, we finally did it. Um, and in the free talent slot, they just moved Unholy Packed up. So now instead of being a last tier talent, it's in the level 45 row. They nerfed it to only give 5% strength now instead of 8%. Um, and they also nerfed the damage that Chains does to kind of reflect that it's a level 45 talent and not an end tier talent. Um, I honestly don't think that this ability fits into this talent row. Um, we have Pestilence and Defile. Both of them are focused around death and decay. Um, one is it synergizes well with wounds. The other one is just more stats and just damage. Uh, synergizes really well with the Night Fae ability. And then we have Unholy Pact. On AoE, it's still probably going to be the best one just because it is pretty much the only purely AoE talent in this tier. Uh, so you're going to pick it. But I don't think it fits well into this talent row. And now for the super controversial change. Dark Transformation is removed, but its functionality has been added to Apocalypse. So essentially they just merged the two abilities. Um, so you don't have to press Dark Transformation and Apocalypse in your opener, you just press Apocalypse. This introduces a lot of issues, um, mostly negatives, some positives, and I will talk about both. So their notes here is that legendary conduits will that interact with your ghoul while they have dark transformation still function the same way as they did prior to the change. So for example, if you have uh, the deadliest coil legendary that extends your dark transformation time each time you death coil, that still works on your ghoul. Um, everything else like that, frenzied monstrosity still works. So they don't intend to actually change how Dark Transformation works, they simply just wanted to bake it together with Apocalypse. So to compensate for the change, Dark Transformation used to be a 1 minute cooldown, and Apocalypse is a 1.3 minute cooldown. So Death Coil now gives you 1.5 second uh, CD reduction on your Apocalypse, and this is just going to help you get the CD down so you can press it more often. So this, first of all, introduces a number of issues for the spec. At the beginning of the Shadowlands beta, they made a change to Apocalypse where they changed its cooldown from 1.5 to 1.3 minute cooldown, so it would line up with Unholy Assault. So in BFA, Unholy DK cooldowns were always awkward to use because they were misaligned. So you always ended up having to save something and not use it just to line it up with your other cooldown. Um, and they fix this whenever they change the Apocalypse CD to 1.3 minutes. However, now that Death Coil actually gives you cooldown reduction on Apocalypse, they're once again completely desynced. So Apocalypse and Unholy Assault are never going to sync up. 
Um, and this is just going to get even worse later on in the expansion where you get even more cooldown reduction on your apocalypse from things like uh, conduits and then the more haste you have the more you're able to death coil also we have a legendary that reduces the cost of our death coil so you get even more cooldown reduction so you can see that apocalypse and unholy assault they used to line up uh, now just doesn't and that's super awkward to use any spec any good DPS spec usually relies on syncing cooldowns together to do a burst of damage. Having things desynced just feels super awkward, and this is just adding onto the list of awkward things that you have to play um, if you want to play as an unholy DK. Another issue that this introduces is that Epidemic does not give us cooldown reduction on Apocalypse. So we're back. In the exact same situation we were in during BFA, where on AoE, you would Epidemic and not get cooldown reduction on Dark Transformation. Um, so now we don't get cooldown reduction on essentially two abilities, Apocalypse or um, Dark Transformation, unless you take the Army of the Damned Talent. But typically for AoE situations, I think Blizzard wants us to play on Holy Assault, so that doesn't really seem all that viable. So once again, in AoE, you're going to be pressing Death Coils to get your Apocalypse off cooldown so that you can actually use your Dark Transformation ability. So it's going to feel super awkward, and I really hope that they introduce the cooldown reduction element to Epidemic as well. Even if it's not a 1.5 second CDR like it is on Death Coil, it should be at least like a 1 second CDR on AoE. Um, so you don't have to give up CDR if you're actually trying to do AoE damage. Now let's talk about the talent builds and what these changes actually mean for how you play the spec. Dark Transformation just got CDR from your Death Coil or your Epidemic previously. Now that it's part of Apocalypse, we have a ton of options for getting extra cooldown reduction. First of all, Army of the Damned will give you an extra second every time you Death Coil. So that means that every death coil you get 2.5 second cooldown reduction on your apocalypse. On top of that, we also have a conduit called Convocation of the Dead that gives us cooldown reduction on apocalypse each time we burst a festering wound. And we also have a legendary called Deadliest Coil that will reduce the cost of our death coils so we can get way more death coils out. All those together Make it so you can Apocalypse essentially every 40 seconds, and that's just with my current gear. The more gear you get and the higher the Conduit rank goes, the lower your Apocalypse cooldown will be. So this opens up an Army of the Damned build, where on single target you will just play Army of the Damned since you will be able to Apocalypse essentially every 35 to 40 seconds, uh, depending on what gear we're going to be in um, and during Bloodlust or outside of Bloodlust. And that, that's it. Does that build feel fine to play? Yeah, it's alright, but it's nothing special. However, that means that we have a bunch of dead talents now. Unholy Assault, which was kind of the build that we were playing previously, might fall out of favor if they actually tune Magus of the Dead to do any damage, uh, just because of the awkward cooldown timing. Nothing is going to line up properly, so why use a talent that doesn't line up with any of your abilities? Summon Gargoyle, still going to be a dead talent unless they buff it heavily. Um, so I'm really pessimistic about these talent options that we will have. I feel like for dungeons and for AoE, it would make sense that we would want to play like an Unholy Pact, Unholy Assault build. And then for single target, an Army of the Damned Defile build. Um, but currently, it just seems like instead of taking a step forward, they completely just like ran backwards to even before they started making changes on the beta. So I'm really, really unhappy with the changes they made just because it feels extremely awkward to play. And the biggest disappointment is that they didn't fix any of the issues that they intended to with these changes. At the beginning of the blue post, they said that they wanted to reduce the number of uh, globals that we press in our opener and they wanted to help us with our rune economy. This change or these changes don't help our rune economy at all because it just removes essentially two global cooldowns from your opener 
um, that were empty globals that didn't cost you any resources. So technically, pressing those two buttons uh, was a little bit better because it gave you two extra seconds to get runes back. Now that you don't press those buttons, in those two seconds, you're just sitting there doing nothing. So then the big question becomes, how should have they went about fixing the issues that they talked about? I think the most recommended changes were to simply take Dark Transformation off the global cooldown and take Summon Gargoyle off the global cooldown and keep everything else the same. It's a simple change. It makes it so you still have the option and the choice between using Dark Transformation and Apocalypse separately. Uh, because there are scenarios, especially Mythic Plus and PvP, where you don't necessarily want to press both of those buttons together. Um, it removes a global cooldown from your opener. Also, if Summon Gargoyle was off the global cooldown, it still ser serves the same purpose. You have one less button that you need to press in your opener. Those changes don't solve our rune economy at all. But then again, the changes that Blizzard made doesn't improve our rune economy either. So I'm really not sure why they made these changes to the spec. It pretty much just put a dead talent back on the tree and it caused one of our iconic talents that is Unholy Frenzy to be absolutely miserable to play with. Um, so I really hope that they listen to the overwhelming negative feedback that they received on these changes and either revert them or go about it a different way to try and fix the issues that Unholy DK has. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about these changes. I think on the surface, it looked like they might be positive. But then once you look at the ability interaction with our talent, our conduit, and just the way the spec comes together, they're absolutely a negative change. The only good part about today's uh, beta build was that Epidemic is baseline. Outside of that, I honestly can't say that I'm happy with the changes they decided to make. But either way, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.